And here we go. Notes taken before watching. Now, let's see. Okay, um, I have spent a lot of time on this already, so I'm probably going to rush through at least some of these. Now, in preparation for this, the last few weeks and months, I've rewatched Spider Man 1 through 3, The Amazing Spider Man 1, 1 2, Daredevil Movie, Dark Man, Captain America Civil War, Spider Man Homecoming, Infinity War. Now, I haven't, I've only watched Endgame once since I rarely watch anything in theaters more than once, and it's so recent, so there's no library copy yet. Now, I also rewatched End of Watch, but that wasn't specifically for this, that was. I just I can't. Anyway, I like Jake Gyllenhaal. I, uh, yeah, I I love Jake Gyllenhaal and everything I've seen him in. So I'm I'm not 100 certain if I have watched City Slickers one. But yeah, Donnie Darko, Day After Tomorrow, Brokeback. Day After Tomorrow is not a good movie, but I think he's quite good in it. Donnie Darko, Day After Tomorrow, Brokeback Mountain, Jarhead, Zodiac, Prince of Persia. Again. Regardless of what I may have said before, I do think he does a good job. I don't think problems with that movie are his fault. Source code, end of watch. And a lot of the ones that I haven't seen, I probably will. I've heard amazing things about his performance in them. Yeah, about them and his performance in them. I've said it before, but the Spider-Man 3 Rift Tracks is amazing. So it's the Dark Knight one and the Heroes one. There are a few things they say on the Spider-Man 3 Rift Tracks that relate to this or Homecoming in kind of a funny way. When Harry is taken out by being knocked off his glider from the web, Spider-Man uses you know, clothes lining him. They say even Hydro-Man wouldn't fall for that when Hydro-Man kind of sort of is in this movie, just not called Hydro-Man. Although there were theories that it would be Hydro-Man. Excuse me. And when Gwen calls for everyone to chant Spider-Man's name at the Key of the City parade thing, the Rift Tracks jokingly start chanting Captain Marvel, who Spider-Man asks if she can do the work in this movie. Also, when when he says that, Fury says, don't invoke her name. If that's Talos, does that mean that basically like Talos is like don't you don't get to you don't get to use her name she means more to me than she could possibly mean to you and you don't get to use her you, you yeah so, something like that I, I don't know now i forgot to know exactly when and where this comes up but they say something about michael keaton and they're like he's dead right and you know years after that he played you know yeah 10 years after he played vulture in homecoming now, excuse me. Right, yes, and this, I noted this months and months back. I, yeah, I really, I love that mysterious villain. I'm really, really happy they did the signature fishbowl. I don't doubt the MCU can make that look great. And, yeah, what, what I wrote was, I thought it would be interesting if, you know, have him make Peter slowly lose his grasp on what is real, kind of lose his mind, maybe through illusions. Mysterio makes Peter thinks he has to defend himself, and so when he attacks, it turns out he hit one of his friends, which Peter, because of his illusion, saw as being an enemy. And let's see. I want the movie to go full psychological thriller and have Peter at his absolute lowest end. Now, ultimately, it doesn't quite go there. But at the end of the day, it's, it's an MCU movie. They have a formula. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with it. I'm not, you know, me not giving it a perfect 10 out of 10. That's not because of that. That's not like, yeah. Now, and yeah, for, for those who don't know Mysterio, if you watched Finchers of the Game, Mysterio could easily have been behind it. Now. Bruce Campbell made varying cameos throughout the Sam Raimi, Sam Raimi Spider-Man films. Jeffrey Henderson, who worked on the storyboards for the cancelled fourth Spider-Man film, said in 2016 
The Campbell was intended to eventually be revealed to have been Quentin Beck slash Mysterio the whole time. Which makes me wonder, he doesn't accomplish anything in the three movies. Is it supposed to be that he was doing odd jobs before becoming Mysterio? I do think it could be funny if Bruce Campbell had a cameo in this in Far From Home, maybe sees Mysterio do something and looks impressed or even says that looks really cool or the like. Now, I mean, I guess maybe Quentin Beck was like keeping an eye on Peter, but how could he possibly know? I, I, I'll grant MJ's play. I could see how if Quentin knew that Peter was Spider-Man, he would know that eventually Spider-Man would try to watch the play. But the other two? I mean, that the, the wrestling thing, how could he possibly expect Spider-Man to show up there? You know, it's, it's actually the first place Spider-Man does. How, how would he even know Spider-Man existed? And the French restaurant, just, no. Anyway. Excuse me. Yeah, I was wondering if the Sinister Six were going to be in this. Mysterio confirmed. Yeah, and this was back when Vulture was confirmed. And there was supposed to be more villains in addition to the, the four elementals. Homecoming, the post credit scene has the, the guy we know will become Scorpion say, ask Vulture if he knows who Spider-Man is and says, there's some friends on the outside who could maybe like cut his head off and you know so something like that. I guess maybe that's gonna be the third Spider-Man movie then now that his identity has been revealed. Maybe like the Sinister Six, like if if Vulture and the the guy who becomes Scorpion both are leaving prison in that third movie, you know, maybe breaking out of prison. Perhaps, and then Scorpion becomes Scorpion. That's two members out of the Sinister Six, and yeah, I I don't know. I I could imagine something like like that. Maybe Sinister Six and Peter's identity being revealed is too much for a single movie. But you know, now let's see. Right. Yeah. In, yeah, at the, yeah, at the, you know, the 31st of, of December last year. A recent trailer, I think it was in Brazil, which hasn't been leaked to the rest of the world yet, but was showing there for a Comic-Con thing, shows that Mysterio asks Spider-Man to fight with him to defeat the Hydra-Man thing. And I was thinking, there's no way they're bringing Mysterio and then not making him a villain. What I think might happen is that they're going to play like Batman Begins, for the first half of the movie, you'd think that the people fighting alongside the hero protagonist are good guys like him, but then it's revealed that they're actually the bad guys. And only close to the very end of the film, it's revealed that they are the main bad guys. They do that with Mysterio. I really, really hope that it's not going to be the post credit scene that reveals him to be the bad guy, like it's been more than Doctor Strange. Works for that movie, but not the anime character in that movie, but it really sucks for this character being in this movie. I did not warn before I spoiled Batman Begins. Uh, sorry. I don't know what else to say. I I did not realize that that was... I, I didn't think about the fact that that's obviously a very different continuity and franchise than, than this. I hope that didn't... I'm sorry. I, I hope I didn't spoil it for anyone. I hope everyone watching this video has watched Batman Begins already. If you hadn't, you're, you're missing out. Now, the even even if even though I just spoiled some, it's still well worth watching. Now, let's see. Yeah, so so. I yeah I I don't know. It is pretty close to the end that it's revealed. So, it is somewhat like that. Yeah. Now, yeah, then I put in a bunch of stuff from Wikipedia about Mysterio, and you can read that for yourself. I'm not gonna, let's see. Let's see. 
Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so let's see, trailer number one. Aunt May is now supportive of Peter being Spider-Man. Poor Happy still being dragged along. Happy flirts with Aunt May. Peter Parker here to pick up a passport, please. Cute. And Peter seemingly doesn't pack the Spider-Man suit. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna read everything. For the for the you look pretty, you know that that whole thing, you know, as as quite good in in the trailer. I I do have to wonder is it maybe a wasted opportunity not have him respond, you know, when she said you know therefore I have value like him. To, no, no, I was nice to you before you looked pretty or something, but. I don't know. I, I do like the way it plays. I, I love the way it plays in the movie. And let's see. And Spider-Man wingsuit floats into a storm because the people of Marvel watch the trailer for Just Cause War 2. And yeah, I know the Mysterio looks great. Everything looks perfect. Let's see. I guess, I mean, the very first moment you see him, you see his face. You don't see the fishbowl helmet. But it's also a really good shot of him, like, being, you know, appearing, being introduced. Maybe they didn't do that with him also having the helmet on. I do think if they had a shot like that and just have it fade away, I think that would have been good to use for the trailer, but maybe they didn't think about that or something. Now. Yeah, and you know, Flash is a fan of Spider-Man, but still hates Peter. We haven't quite seen this dynamic in any of the other movies. In the Amazing Spider-Man 1, by the time we saw Flash was a fan of Spider-Man, he was being nice to Peter. Now we don't really, it's not a big element in the movie, but yeah, it was, it was a, it was, it was fun enough. Let's see. Now, before this movie, there were six solo Spider-Man movies. The MCU movies that he's in, other than the solo ones, I love without reservation. I do love some of the solo Spider-Man movies. But I do have issues with all of them. And I was wondering if this was going to be the first that I don't have any issues with at all. I guess... I mean... Let's see. Is there any element that I feel got too much or too little attention? Anything I felt didn't need to be there? Anything I felt... No, no, yeah. This is the first one I love without reservation. Now, basically I think that other than Spider-Man 3, each Spider-Man movie is better than the ones that came before. That doesn't mean in every way, but better overall. The parts that are greater are greater, the parts that are lesser are less lesser and fewer. And what is that? This has the same director as Homecoming. Let's see. I thought this movie did a good job of sort of the placing, you know, Peter is the, the new Tony, basically. Which, you know, it even ends with his identity, his secret identity being revealed. It's just that Tony intentionally himself revealed the identity. Now. Right, and, and we have the, the trailer where, yeah, it's the, it's the second trailer, trailer number two. You know, Peter and Happy, I have to admit, I, I thought that scene was going to happen basically at the start of the movie, not at the 
to, so close to the end. Anyway, yeah, then, you know, like, yeah, when Happy says, I don't think Tony would have done what he did if he didn't know that you were going to be here after he was gone. I really appreciate that Happy is still more like a friend to Spider-Man now, after the events of Homecoming. At the start of Homecoming, he's basically like, I did not take a job as Tony Stark's driver slash bodyguard to babysit some overeager high school kid. But at the end, after Peter saves the jet, he is grateful to him. I'm glad that hasn't been undone. The relationship was funny in Homecoming, but growth is good, and it's something the MCU is quite good at. And... I do think it's too bad that it's not, you know, it's, it's going to be on the DVD and it's going to be a short film. It's not just going to be a deleted scene or something. But the, the whole thing with, you know, Peter using the Iron Spider suit to fight bad guys who've got guns and, yeah. I mean, it's not like there's not, the, the movie has a ton of action and moves very fast. So, now, let's see. Appreciate this trailer does clarify Nick Fury did try to contact Spider-Man. He didn't just drop in completely unannounced like the earlier tra trailer made it look. And and yeah, let me see. MJ has really realized that Peter is Spider-Man. I may have said it in other videos I've done on the MCU, but it really is quite an interesting reversal that Spider-Man was introduced to the MCU in Civil War, a story which in the comics has him finally revealed his true identity to the world. You know, in the comics, by the time Civil War happens, Peter has been around for some time. You know, the yeah, you know, the, the storyline in the comics is from, like, 2007, I want to say. And, you know, Peter, the Spider-Man character appeared in the comics first, and I want to say 1963. But, yeah, in the comics, it's finally revealed to true identity to the world when in the MCU, Spider-Man is nearly the only hero who does not, who does have a secret identity. I think Black Panther is the only one, and... Honestly, I'm not 100% certain about that one because we don't know exactly how much T'Chaka gives away there at the in in the is it mid credits or post credit scene of Black Panther the solo movie. You know, we, he clearly opens the, the border somewhat and he tells the world that they have vibranium and what it does for them and all this stuff. There's some chance that he there tells them that he's the Black Panther, you know. Now, let's see. I, I quite like, you know, Flash, do you work for Spider-Man? I work with Spider-Man, not for Spider-Man. Now, not very much of Homecoming has Peter's friends in danger. This one doesn't have that much. Oh, wait, actually, yeah, I guess more of it. I, I would say there's more of it in this one. Because really, in a lot of the, in a lot of Homecoming, it's more that the weapons are out there and they're dangerous, and Spider-Man himself is in danger. But really, the only scene of Peter's friends in danger is the the memorial with the with the elevator. But in this, you have the the scene in yeah, you have London. You also have when they were in Venice. Yeah. Now, let's see. And, yeah, there's this video called Top 3 Things You Missed in Spider-Man Far From Home Trailer. And, yeah, and they said that Mysterio is probably lying about being a hero in this, so it's possible he's lying about being from another part of the multiverse. There's a... The, yeah. They... The director clarified in the video to, to watch, for Mo, watch Mojo. Technically, there's no part of the movie that says that he's lying about there being a multiverse. It's just that he lies about a lot of things. 
it's possible that there is a multiverse. I really hope that there does turn out that that there is a multiverse in in the MCU. It just that's for one thing that simply is too amazing an idea to tease and then not give us. Of course, at the same time, if the future of the MCU is cosmic and it appears to be, I'm not sure the multiverse is necessarily something they would want to explore soon. But it really is the the. There are a lot of things they can do with the with the multiverse. It can help explain the X Men. The the, you know, it, that is going to be something. You know. Yeah, that's that's. I I know that they can do it, but it is going to be something like they can't just have and and they're not going to. I know they're 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 incredibly smart. The, the people, you know, shaping the MCU are incredibly talented. But let's hypothetically say that, yeah, let's, let's say we were dealing with, like, you know, maybe not, maybe not as much today, but, like, the way that, you know, around, before, yeah, I guess, I guess it ended with, I guess, I guess Justice League was maybe the last one, but back then, you know, the the when when let's see, was it Warner Brothers? I wanna anyway, anyway, yeah, the studio behind the DCU, you know, with just you know throwing everything at the, just trying to figure something out. It would not work for the MCU at all if they just said, you know, oh, you know, suddenly people are talking about mutants. They couldn't. They couldn't do what the first movie did, for example, of just saying, you know, people are now starting to talk about mutants, and then it turns out, well, some of them have been around for for a lot of decades, and it's like, how could you possibly keep them them hidden? I, I don't I think it works okay for that movie, because technically that movie doesn't say that it's not you know, it doesn't say that almost no one actually knows about them. It's just that now people are talking about it politically in the US. You know, now they're trying to deal with it. That doesn't mean it only just became public knowledge. You know, not everything that's a problem becomes a dread. I know, I know. What mutant problem? No, the the just because something is considered to be a problem doesn't mean people are gonna immediately jump on try, trying to find a solution for it. Now, was that everything I meant to say about that? Yeah, but yeah, the, there, are, there are videos on how to, how the, the, the X-Men should go, come into the MCU. Anyway, now, yeah, the Spider-Man comics have a lot of different subgenres covered. I don't think it's realistic for all of them to be in any one movie. I'd say that the Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy gets right Peter working for the Daily Bugle. Basically, everything directly related to that is covered nicely. The Amazing Spider-Man captures the guilt Peter feels over Uncle Ben. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 gets the romance between Spider-Man and Gwen Stacy. All of aforementioned movies get the aspect that Peter, although he tries, cannot save everyone. Homecoming captures the feel of being in high school. Now, which what what does this capture of the? Hmm. I mean, I guess I'm not sure. It's it's a. Well, yeah. I guess. Excuse me. I guess the thing of of how like. Basically, Peter doesn't, you know, some of the time he just wants to be a teenager, doesn't always want to go out and see if he can be a hero. Now, Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy are adorable together, I'm always referring to the Amazing Spider-Man movies. You may not fall in love with their characters, but you fall in love with their love for each other. And I was wondering if Peter and MJ in this are adorable, or at least cute together, and they are very, very cute. I, yeah, like I, like I said, I don't think they're as cute as Peter and Gwen from the, but 
just like you know yeah it, it's you can't necessarily yeah anyway Spider-Man Homecoming was the first Spider-Man solo movie that didn't have at least one villain but at least some green to him and he would talk to himself and or hear voices at least one of the villains is split personality and or otherwise crazy I fully acknowledge that there is a bunch of that in the comics but after a while we do want some we do kind of want some variation and it did still have at least one villain who is genuinely crazy and has some tragedy to his backstory and the climax includes at least some element of wondering if it's possible to save the one since he used to be a good person or if it's simply unavoidable that they end up dead or the like which is also something that's right out of the comics and this yeah I guess this this really is the first one where there isn't like there's no sense that maybe you know Quentin Beck wasn't didn't really doesn't really seem like he was ever a genuinely good person and there's no like Peter has to be careful to also make sure to save him or something but he does have the green thing going and he clearly is crazy and I was wondering if this would be the first Spider-Man solo movie to not have even one single villain who goes from basically a nice good person, a nice person, good person, to being perfectly happy to hurt innocent people because they're now a villain. Again, we don't really know. He, Beck doesn't seem to mind hurting people, but it, there's no real indication that he ever had a problem with that. Does he work to fight the villain between fights like Amazing Homecoming or not like Rain and Man? I mean, hmm. Yeah, yeah, he'll work on stuff that's necessary to fight the villain in between fights. Yeah. Now, let's see. And. Yeah, the the there is a personal relationship between Spider-Man and the villain, and if not, it would be the first time in seven solo films. Seriously, Homecoming almost got there. It literally there's the the only reason there's a personal relationship is between is because Vulture turns out to be the you know he he married you know the the mother of. I'm afraid I don't remember her name, but the romantic interest in the first movie. Now, is he what Peter could have been, might become, or the like? No, but Peter does think that he is, like, better than... He is the new Iron Man. And Homecoming didn't really have much romance between Peter and Liz. Does this have between Peter and MJ? I mean... It's something that Peter wants, for sure. And he, he mentions it as one of the very first things in the movie, so, yeah. Now, there's this Nerdist News video. Is Spider-Man Far From Home's multiverse a lie? And... Yeah, the yeah they were saying maybe a post credit scene would reveal the multiverse is real. Could be a way to get Tom Holland's Peter Parker and Tom Hardy's Venom into the same movie. Maybe they make that be Venom 2. At first he and Spider-Man fight some, but then they team up to go against Carnage, a la Maximum Carnage. And at some point Spider-Man is infected with a symbiote, maybe intentionally to be strong enough against Carnage. And then, you know, just... There's there's really something, but I don't I don't know. I, I tried to Google it, and you know, Venom Two is coming, and it's going to have Carnage, but it might not have Spider Man, and I I do think that it would be worth postponing Venom Two if if it could mean that Spider Man could play a major role in it. I really think I it's it would really it's it. It's too bad to not. It's uh, it would be it would suck. It is what I mean. Um, what's the word? It would be really cool if it was. 
and I do think they have to be, you know, you've already done Venom without Spider-Man, which already doesn't make that much sense, because such a big part of what's interesting about Venom is that this used to be, this symbiote used to be, you know, on, on Spider-Man, on Peter Parker. But if you then also do Carnage without, yeah, I, I really think it would be the, the better way to, now, let's see, and, Right, and then there's an artist video called How Spider-Man Far From Home will resolve Endgame Fallout. And... Yeah, they point out Spider-Man cries a lot in all of these movies. Yeah, now, the first movie, in part with the high school setting, but really in general, creates this world where teachers, tour guides, security guards, basically, they're pretty much just done. They really aren't engaged in their job anymore. They'll shrug off important things. Arguably, the high school principal is an exception, and I was wondering if this was going to do something similar. I mean... For sure, it's still true of the of the teachers. I mean, I'm not sure it's really true of of other authority. Now, homecoming has several parts where Spider-Man's powers don't give him the huge advantage that they usually do. He can't swing through the area with lots of people's houses and gardens. When he gets to the Washington Monument, he has to just climb. He can't swing off something to get to the top quickly. I was wondering if this was going to have something similar. Hmm. I mean, not, not especially, I guess. No. There, there are times where he's without his suit or he's using a suit that doesn't quite have the, yeah. I think they did a good job of justifying the stealth suit. <laughs> I don't remember if the if anybody guessed. I, I remember people talking about why he was wearing the stealth suit instead of other. I'm not sure they guessed that it was to keep his secret identity. Now. Now, Homecoming has a lot of gadgets and special abilities to the suit. Now he has the Iron Spider suit. Got that in Infinity War. We don't know that much about what it can do. Let's see. What, yeah, what it can do that the one from Civil War and Homecoming couldn't. And I was wondering if it has a lot that the Civil War and Homecoming suit didn't. I mean, is that the... Yeah, the, the Iron Spider suit, he doesn't actually use that very much in this. The one he brings isn't the Iron Spider suit at all, is it? It's the other suit. It's the home... Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, Homecoming suit. The one he uses for all of Homecoming after... Yeah, the, the one he gets in Civil War and uses for all of Homecoming. Now... You know, in Spider-Man Homecoming... The vulture gets frustrated at that one worker of his who keeps slacking off. When the vulture brings it up, he just goes, yeah, 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 yeah. I worked with a guy like that. Then disintegrated, though. Didn't have the tech. And let's see. Aunt May really didn't have anything to do in this like she didn't in Homecoming. But then, I mean, she does have the the previous five solo movies, all five of them, she has something to do. So, you know, they're they're just they're choosing to focus on other members of the extended cast. And I think it's working. I, I don't mind it too much. 
and oh right yeah I did right here oh, Peter tried to quit being a hero it happens in a lot of the second solo movie for comic book characters and it happens in Raimi's second Spider-Man but not the what not the Amazing Spider-Man 2 yeah he does quit now wow I must not have been entirely awake when I wrote that and yeah, I was wondering if there was going to be a love triangle in this movie. There's at least one love triangle in all three Sam Raimi movies, always involving Peter and Mary Jane. They're all quite bad, a lot of love triangles are, maybe most. If there is a love triangle in this, it would be the first time in a Spider-Man solo movie since Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3. Yeah, so far the only... Let's see. Yeah, right. And so far, that is the only third solo movie for Spider-Man, but hopefully this one will make the, the second one. And, yeah, and, you know, Wikipedia notes, you know, Remy... Is that, is that two eyes? Um, yeah, Remy He plays Brad Davis, a popular student who progresses as competition... For MJ's affection, but I mean, at least it does turn out she was never actually really interested in him in that kind of way. And I was wondering if Betty Brant was going to be a compelling character in this. She doesn't have a lot to do in the three Sam Raimi movies or Homecoming. I I liked her a lot in this, and yeah, it's it's I I have to admit I thought that they were gonna do like a reporter thing with her in this. You know, she does still host the that report thing, you know, with, with Jason, I think his name is. Like in Homecoming. And this movie does a good job spreading the action scenes over the entire movie. And let's see. Now. And I was wondering how the action was going to be visually. That is one weakness of Spider-Man Homecoming. So this director is more comfortable with comedy than with action scenes. Sounds true with the Amazing Spider-Man movies with romantic comedy stuff. The climax of Spider-Man 3 is huge and really well constructed. Based on the trailers, this has a potential to a match, but it didn't top it. Spider-Man is like Spider-Man's three team-up movies has. Top it. Spider-Man, a green flying superpower of character with ranged weapons, whose allegiance may be or has been dubious, and giant powerful beings that can make quick work of innocence. But Raimi has shown to have a much better eye for action than this director, and I was wondering if he's improved a lot since last time. Really, I, I'm not sure I would say there's a single scene that... I mean, the climax of this isn't... Yeah, I mean, in, in some ways, but it's not as, yeah, it's, it's not really trying to be, I would say. Excuse me. Now. Right, and this is where I know, will this movie have the Sinister Six? It seems like that's enough villains to have six members for it. You have the four villains that are based on the natural elements, Mysterio, and their theories go around that's not Nick Fury, that's actually the chameleon that would bring us to six. But you know, the 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 elementals are only you know, there's really only ever one at play at the same time. In play, whatever. But that does make sense given how big each of them are. And I was wondering if this movie is going to show Peter saying a lot of people rather than only a few individual people. Hmm. I mean, it's more that he keeps that he, that he fights the bad guys and he keeps the the danger away from from people more than specifically saving. Yeah. But let's see. But yeah, really, the, the, yeah. Okay, so, Spider-Man 1, Amazing Spider-Man 2, 
There are characters who say that Peter Parker must know who Spider-Man is because he takes his picture. Which I realize is from the comics, but it is still silly. Some things just work better in a comic book than a live action movie, even though it's based on a comic book. And I was wondering if that was going to be in this, or is Peter still not taking pictures of Spider-Man? Like he also isn't in Homecoming. And yeah, he, he isn't, so. And... Yeah, there's the yeah, there's a video where they go over the the different suits, and they mentioned the web gliders, which I really like. You know, there's those are right out of the comics. Now let's see. Yeah, and there's the the far from home, MJ Swain's TV spot. This is the first time live action that a Spider-Man girlfriend doesn't like the swing. I mean. There has to be some who don't. Both Kirsten Dunst, MJ, and Emma Stone's Gwen Stacy seem to enjoy the swing. Gwen Stacy and Spider-Man 3 also seem to be pretty happy with it. And MJ continues to look like she's having trouble being comfortable and socializing. It's awkward and uncomfortable for her. And I have some rewatch notes since I watched, among others, Daredevil again. I, I don't remember if I've ever said this, but I've wanted to say it for a lot of years. I swear, the girl who breaks up with Matt over voicemail sounds just like Sarah Michelle Gellar. It apparently is not her. It's like, what was it, the sister or current girlfriend or something of Colin Farrell. But just, she sounds so much like, not just voice, but also kind of like, like diction. Like when she says, are you there, Matt? Of course you're not there. She sounds just like Sarah Michelle Gellar. Now, maybe it's a similar type kind of thing. Anyway, early in the movie, Karen offers Matt some coffee. He declines, and when Farley says he would love some, she leaves. He says, I guess she's making fresh pot. Way later in the movie, when she clears up that it's not mom, but wow, she does serve him coffee. I guess she finally got around to making that fresh pot. And Spider-Man 3 rewatch notes. The killer is at large. What are you talking about? The plot of the movie. I know. I can barely believe myself. It really is terrible. Amazing Spider-Man 1 rewatch notes. When Gwen invites Peter to dinner, although she forgets it at first, she does emphasize they will meet in 2016. It's good that she's referring to apartment 2016 because they are not going to be having dinner together in the year 2016. Right before Peter tells her He's Spider-Man. Gwen keeps saying, say it, just say it. And I just want her to go full Sam Kinison. You guys go, say it! And Gwen keeps telling Peter to see the school nurse. Flash beats him up, school nurse. He shows up at school not knowing what day it is and with a swollen eye, school nurse. When he shows up after the lizard slashes across his chest, I have expected her to tell him to see the school nurse. I mean, I get it. He should get medical attention, but it still makes me laugh. Mr. Parker, why aren't you in school? Teenagers should be in school. I kind of wish, I, I don't mind that they do two Godzilla jokes right in a row, but I wish they wouldn't both center on the something of Tokyo. You know, first he says, do I look like the mayor of Tokyo to you? And then he says, you're going to go back to the citizens of Tokyo. Just if, if it was a little bit more, yeah. Now... Okay, so, yes, I was wondering if this uses the web and Spider-Man's other powers well, memorably, creatively. I said there's at least one case of that in each of the films he's been in since, and including the original Raimi one. I would say so, yes. I, I quite like him attaching all the drones, well, as many drones as he could, anyway, if, to each other with the 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 web, and then electrifying so that all of them would be electrocuted. Now. And 
yeah, there's a there's this featurette on the Spider-Man 2.1 DVD called Villains of Spider-Man. And when they talk about Venom, they say that the key to Spider-Man's villains is that they're personal to Peter. The solo movies up to this point do, not the same ones, excuse me, and this one, uh, yeah, again. Now, every Spider-Man movie has put action on screen that is right out of, right out of the comics. So there's someone who's read Spider-Man since I was 13. So, and that was for some years before the first Sam Raimi one came out. And Tom Holland's memorable workout with Jake Gyllenhaal, and and yeah, Steven said, young people find someone who looks at you the way Jake Gyllenhaal looks at Tom Holland. I was gonna say, I you know, if, if Steven hadn't said it, yeah. And and Steven tries to trick Tom into giving away a spoiler, which he's infamous for. It was, it was uh, yeah. I really liked the part where it was revealed that just, uh, yeah. And, and Tom's story about the workout with Jake Gyllenhaal was pretty funny. And Zendaya lifts the curtain on her own spidey sense. Poor Zendaya being in the unpleasant situation for the first shooting of the spidey swing. And then they use the, you know, the 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 reshot version which sounds a lot less stressful and let's see hmm right and there's a video called top 10 things to remember before seeing Spider-Man Far From Home and I was more, yeah, since it's only been 12 years and a few solo movies since we last saw Sandman. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if this would feel like too little time has passed. Maybe, maybe it's a, a good thing that Spider-Man and Sandman are never in the exact same place. Really, the the only reason, like, the the yeah. It's it's so that it's to it's to set up that there is it's it's one of those things I wish they hadn't put it in the trailer. I'm not too upset. There's there's not that much in the trailers that I feel like shouldn't be in the trailers. And they didn't know, you know. Apparently, the the stuff that's going to be a short short movie, you know, about what Peter does before he travels. You know, that was going to be in the movie. It was only very recently that it was cut out of the movie. Some some scenes I just thought would come much sooner in the movie, but the the Yeah, I you know, we see a few seconds of Sandman and that's all there is in the movie, basically. So 